thank you all for joining this that we think is a great wrap up for the year that we've had many conversations uh, pertaining to Bangladesh and its energy situation. We call this the international um, meeting on uh, energy investment in Bangladesh. Um, welcome on behalf, and I hope to say this all in one breath, on behalf of the Asian People's Movement on Debt and Development, APMDD, the Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt, Bank Track, Clean, that's Coastal Livelihood and Environmental Action Network, Green Camel Bell, Growth Watch, the International Accountability Project, INSAF, um, Japan Center for Sustainable Environment and Society, JAXUS, Kruha, which is the People's Coalition for the Right to Water from Indonesia, Market Forces, NGO Forum on ADB, Fulbari Solidarity Group, Recourse, the Sunrise Project, and of course, Urgewald. So um, we've had so many people register for this international dialogue, and we can see our friends from Australia, Cambodia, Germany, uh, China, Indonesia, Japan, Pakistan, Philippines, um, Netherlands, South Africa, Sweden, the United Kingdom, the US, Thailand, and of course, from Bangladesh and India here. And we see um, uh, very many students from different universities, especially from Bangladesh. And we hope to really sort of um, um, go uh, and do a deep dive on some of the dirty companies in our region with um, investments that are destroying uh, Shonar Bangla in the 50th year of independence of Bangladesh. We've had many programs in the year yeah, some of you have joined almost all the programs, but many of you have come for specific programs. Uh, we've had, um, I think, when did we start? We must have started in June, and we had the energy sector of Bangladesh present situation in demands of climate, so, of demands of civil society. Uh, then we had the external debt, energy and prospect of economic recovery in Bangladesh dialogue. Then we had the challenges of the energy sector immunity uh, in Bangladesh. We listened to the voices of the affected communities from the JICA finance Matarbari, coal power plant, uh, a 1,200 megawatt plant. We had the Power China back Borishal uh, coal power plant, the Indian Exim Finance Rampal uh, coal power plant, which is really infamous. Then we um, had um, people from um, China Exim uh, Finance Pyra coal power plant speak to us. Semcorp Singapore backed Kohelia power plant um, uh, people um, affected by it spoke to us. China Exim financed Eastern Refinery SPM, single point mooring and oil storage in Mahesh Khali. We went to that area and, and brought you voices from there. Then we had this big dialogue on the Clean Air Act of Bangladesh with some reflections from India too. Uh, we also had the Indo-Bangla Dialogue 2, where we focused on the Adani Goda uh, coal-fired plant, which of course will send all that dirty electricity to Bangladesh, and the whole thing is positioned as if it's there to, um, uh, to really help Bangladesh and uh, Bangladesh's energy situation. In that dialogue, we also discussed um, uh, the impact of Rampal coal power plant on the people and the Sundarbans and Reliance's Meghna Ghat power plant, which is near Dhaka. Uh, we um, then had um, another dialogue on just Adani and the Godda uh, power plant, and we heard people from Godda speak to us on that. We had the toxic fly ash tree in the site of Bangladesh and India um, and how this toxic fly ash trade is affecting this shared world uh, that we have. We then had the China-Bangla energy dialogue and we really thank all friends, comrades, campaigners who've been with us in this journey this year. You know, um, um, when we began these series of dialogues, we thought 
that in a way COVID had come as a blessing to at least small groups like ours. So um, Clean Bangladesh that took um, uh, that took the initiative to do this together with us here in India. Um, we thought that we can never have that kind of money to bring people from across the world physically to a meeting and discuss and decide on how to move forward. And really, COVID-19 gave us um, the opportunity to bring people together without really spending resources, but really building on our social capital and your goodwill um, so that um, we can, we have had these dialogues and we can actually look forward to some concrete actions in um, uh, 2021. Uh, we, I will first of all say that um, um, uh, Sagar, uh, Shagor, he's called, the communication officer of CLEAN and Kunthal Roy, uh, the Bangladesh coordinator for GSCC will be taking notes. Uh, we will be uh, recording parts of this program. Uh, Sajad Hussain Tuhin is working in the background like he usually does for the smooth conduct of the program. Um, Hassan Mehdi, of course, the executive director of CLEAN is uh, crucial to this whole exercise and to whatever has happened till now. Um, we will, in the beginning, listen to Professor Anu Mohamed and he will um, give us a sense from the ground and all his um, um, understanding of the Bangladesh energy landscape. After that, um, we will listen to five of our colleagues who will show us um, what investment has come in from five constituent areas and institutions. That's IFIs, that's ADB, AIIB, and World Bank. Um, investment from China, from India, from Japan, and of course, Europe. Then we will go into our five breakout rooms for exactly 30 minutes. And then, um, and this which breakout room you land up in is of course according to your choice that you made when you were doing your registrations and in each of the breakout rooms um, uh, you will discuss the energy uh, investment in bangladesh from your own constituency or country and um, we'll come up we'll brainstorm come up with some kinds of um, collated decisions as to what you would like to do um, in the first quarter or the first three quarters of 2021 regarding dirty investors um, in Bangladesh. After that, we come back to the plenary again um, and there will be reporting back from the group works in the breakout room. So five presentations, five minutes each. And then we will have a response to these presentations from Lydia Nakbel, uh, APMDD, um, Mohammad Reza Sahab from Kruha Indonesia and Tom Virachat from International Accountability Project. They will sort of uh, summate what has been presented, what they think are the common minimums. Um, and Tom will sort of uh, bring it all together for us so that we can have a concrete plan for 2021. Um, then we'll um, ask our Bangladeshi colleagues to thank us all for all the wonderful work we've done today. The um, house norms, of course, everyone knows. Um, unfortunately, we are muting all your mics except the person speaking. All your questions or comments in the chat box, please. And now um, uh, we will go to um, the first, what we call the inaugural address from Professor Anu Mohamed, who really requires no introduction to this group here. Um, we, we, he will talk, uh, you know, when we talk about the Fulbari coal mine um, um, movement and uh, its success since 2005, uh, when we talk about Rampal coal power plant, when we discuss about anti-coal movements in Bangladesh, the only um, and, the, and the strongest and uh, uh, the, the most uh, what visible face that comes to mind immediately is the face of Professor Anu Mohamed, who has led the Bangladeshi political and civil um, society against fossil fuel investments, has led the process of the world's first people's um, led energy plan for Bangladesh. Um, Professor Anu, over to you. Thank you, Bidda. 
is it okay is sound is okay hi right? we can hear you well um and uh, yes go on we are really waiting eagerly to hear from you professor good afternoon everyone. you have about 10 11 minutes okay i'm sorry if i will cut you down uh, this is a long yes. session uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yes uh, thank you everybody uh, is it's it's a pleasure it's happy to meet you all all these in this dangerous and uh, very difficult time of pandemic crisis and i feel uh, we need to uh, need to have uh, need to maintain physical distance because of corona but but we need to have a social solidarity we don't need to make social distance we have to build up social solidarity global solidarity to fight this crisis this corona crisis also the development process which create the crisis like corona so all these are related to development process development philosophy in uh, different countries and we have uh, friends uh, from around the world different countries have uh, many in many ways they, we have very common experiences of like corporate driven investment policy corporate driven of this fossil fuel the domination of these corporate groups and their uh, dominant uh, uh, and their like guiding principles of the government by these corporate groups and these are making huge uh, disaster uh, in many parts of the world and globally we know that climate crisis and other crises are happening uh, bringing and this like existential crisis of the world so bangladesh is like following blindly this path of destruction that is the tragedy and that is the main issue of bangladesh bangladesh has the opportunity to go very well because bangladesh didn't have uh, huge coal plants did not have uh, huge uh, nuclear plants so bangladesh could start it very fresh and very well in the renewable energy Uh, it, it it could be a model uh, bangladesh because uh, india china for example india and china they are like suffering or facing problems in shifting from coal to renewable because they involve the millions of jobs there in bangladesh that is not the problem bangladesh could start very fresh but but the tragedy is and the crisis is the bangladesh governments and the policy makers and their foreign uh, uh, the guides are like taking bangladesh into a dangerous path which is rejected by 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 this common sense by common sense that we don't need the fossil fuel or dirty fuel or or the destructive energy line for bangladesh and for electricity generation there are much better alternatives so in bangladesh is like uh, um, the decisions of energy investment is uh, there is a guideline it is called power sector master plan 2016 and it has been uh, it has been revised in 2018 that master plan it is it is uh, very interesting and very uh, crucial to note that this whole this master plan there was no bangladeshi no expert and no public consultation nobody from bangladesh was uh, in the in the list who who prepared this master plan everybody is from jaika and everybody is from jap so that is that is, that shows that the whole master plan was not uh, was intended to build up a nationally in, important and viable feasible and safe uh, uh, energy system it was from the very beginning it from the very beginning it was meant to uh, serve the purpose of some corporate groups from japan from china from india from usa from russia so whole master plan was like they uh, they gave more importance most important uh, the focus on firstly coal and then nuclear and uh, lng imported lng liquidified natural gas there was no uh, emphasis on 
local resource mobilization. There was no emphasis on renewable energy. And recently, you have heard about the government cancellation of uh, cancellation of number of coal plants. Initially, in PSMP, they were they planned for about more than 20 coal-fired power plants. Now, government has declared not officially, but minister has said to the press that they will cancel nearly 16 coal-fired power plants and will keep five. That five is, is, is the most, most dangerous. This is, this, that includes Rampal, that includes Bashkali, Matarbari, Paira. And the cancel 16, they were not yet started. And by canceling those 16, government is trying to bring liquidified natural gas that is that is very expensive and every decision it is it, it is very clear that every decision is backed by the lobbyist the power of lobbies determine the decisions so and we when we look uh, into the revised master plan we found the cunning uh, steps by the government it is said that it is it, it has dropped the coal proportion from 35% to uh, 32%. So it, it, it shows that it, it, it appears that the government is uh, shifting from coal. But if we go for total amount, it, it comes to from 19,000 to 25,000. So it is per percent, in percentage, it is going down, but in total amount, it is going up. So the priority, it, it is like it is to sell the government face image to the global audience. In reality, they are working for all the companies, all the dirty companies from India, from China, from Japan, from USA, from Russia, and uh, keeping their interest and their subcontractors in Bangladesh. And there are many companies around the world from Germany, Japan, China, England, they are working on Fulbury is, here is another problem in Fulbury that, that the British company, which does not have any formal agreement, but despite that, they are making money on share market in London and they are signing contract with Chinese company. So China is very much involved here. It is the two factors that are very important. One is political pressure, political influence, like India is 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 the is the most important part of that and another is uh, the size of the commission so this corruption and political authoritarianism that both in both cases they are making uh, the, the 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 projects of mass destruction and that is taking bangladesh to a very hell uh, like thing so finally i would like to say that this is not the obvious path for electricity generation or energy because it is possible the alternatives and we worked for that in 2017 we published alternative mass power sector master plan we showed that for bangladesh uh, for electricity for all for safe electricity and for cheaper electricity rampal coal-fired power plant or matarbari or bashkali or rupu is not at all essential Bangladesh could proceed in a very uh, feasible way and we showed that that could uh, supply electricity much cheaper, much cheaper, much safer and much feasible way, in sustainable way. And Bangladesh signed sustainable development goals and that sustainable goals, they are working totally opposite to that commitment. But our plan, what we offer that our plan is like very well uh, it, it, it showed that we have to import, give importance to public interest to private profit we need to important give importance to environmental sustainability then to gdp growth we have to give importance to the agriculture system and water system where bangladesh is very rich to keep it that and to add electricity for for making lives better not 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 create for the people so in that case where 
since these all these projects are uh, connected with different uh, countries, uh, different corporate groups from different parts of the world. We know NTPC, Exim Bank India, Exim Bank China, Power China. Uh, we know JICA, Asia Energy or GCM, uh, Fickner from Germany. All these different parts, different corporate groups. So, in order to fight this these projects which are making bangladesh the climate uh, crisis it will increase climate crisis for all it will destroy our silver one it will destroy our coastal belt so in order to stop these projects we need to build up global solidarity we need to make noises in the countries where these companies are coming from we need to use the media we need to raise voices mobilize people we need to write we need to discuss we need to organize all these all the possible way to protest and stop all this because if these projects uh, can go then not only bangladesh it will affect the neighboring countries and also the global it will increase global climate crisis so we we uh, we are we need very badly this global solidarity and every part of the uh, our activities that will strengthen our struggle at home and with that expectation i i expect that today's discussion will help to find the the activities necessary for the saving part of the world and with that expectation i am happy to enable this uh, discussion program thank you Thank you, Professor Anu. Thank you not just for that appeal for global solidarity, uh, which is an important one for today's uh, discussion, but also for all the work put in over the years and for the uh, People's Energy Plan in Bangladesh, which I think will be a cornerstone for all of us involved to really look at and work with. Uh, thank you. Uh, and now we go on to the five presentations. First off to um, the big one, China, uh, just like Professor um, Anu said, um, China is a big player, uh, of course, not just in Bangladesh, but in many, many countries and um, in the subcontinent. Uh, Yiting Wang, who's senior strategist, the Sunrise Project, will um, take us through Chinese investments in Bangladesh. Yiting? Thank you so much, um, Lydia. I'll I'll turn on my video to say hi, but it's probably gonna affect my audio quality. So I will turn it off, but nice to greet everyone. I have been working with Lily Nat Pill from the Asia People's Movement on Debt and Development to um, support our host country partners to help develop and strengthen their uh, in strategy to influence Chinese financiers and investors to shift uh, uh, energy finance from fossil fuel to, to clean. Okay, so, um, you know, as was, uh, I think the, uh, I think across the sort of you know international power sector value chain, uh, there are you know a number of uh, categories of actors uh, involving in the you know coal or other power sector uh, investment, uh, construction and building and supply uh, on operation. Um, and so I think it's important to also get, you know have a broader sense of what are. Um, uh, names and categories of Chinese businesses and investors involved in this process. Uh, and then they each all have different um, uh, you know, motivations uh, uh, in, in, in getting involved in this business. And I think by understanding those motivations and, and, the, and those motivations do change, it helps us to also develop strategies to engage and persuade these actors to shift uh, you know, their businesses business strategies in this country or, or with regard to individual project or you know across the board as well right as as you know the global power market is rapidly shifting away from coal and so uh, so do these companies need to make their strategic shift accordingly as well and I think we need, we as civil society could certainly use that as a leverage to push for that to happen. Um, so, uh, you know, at the very sort of bottom of the value chain is the, you know, the sort of uh, 
coal power plant boiler uh, or other kind of uh, equipment providers and manufacturers uh, such as Shanghai or Harbin or Dongfang Electric. Uh, and then you have uh, sort of the, e the general contractors, right, of the, that are in charge of the construction. And, and the ones that we see often are Power China, Energy China, uh, the China Northeast Industry or Norinco uh, that uh, are, are basically just huge conglomerates that can, per, you know, can engage in all kinds of infrastructure projects and not just in coal or uh, power sector. Uh, and then in another categories of Chinese actors are uh, what, what I call sometimes, uh, uh, you know, they're basically uti major utility companies in China that specialize in developing, uh, you know, power sector assets right, or power fleets. And, they have, you know, they are huge uh, a coal uh, developer inside China and but also over the years have also been getting into renewables and that's also one of the reasons right China is also the world's largest investor in renewable energy domestically as well and so these companies uh, are are doing both at home and then they're also faced with the challenge of facing out or reducing their capacity in coal and increasing renewables um, and of course we're also seeing them you know getting involved in coal projects overseas as this is what they know best how to do right um, and then lastly, we have um, Chinese banks, uh, mostly the two policy banks, China Export Import Bank and China Development Bank, uh, as well as state-owned commercial banks that are providing the, uh, the debt financing for those projects. And I think what's interesting here is that uh, we're you know, not only seeing the major, the traditional investors getting involved in overseas co-project development and investment, uh, we're also seeing some of the manufacturers, equipment manufacturers, and general contractors getting involved in the uh, uh, you know, project development and project sponsorship. Uh, I think this is largely also driven by the desire to, you know, be, be sitting at the table, right, determining um, uh, determining the overall success of the project or drive uh, project pipeline uh, as the market for competition has becoming increasingly fierce. Um, so. Here is uh, just a summary of, uh, I think, uh, sort of five or six of the main projects that um, uh, that have had Chinese involvement uh, that are you know, either in operation or under construction or, uh, or just reaching financial close or still in the pipeline. Um, and this is also the project that Mahadi has requested that we focus on. Um, so I think just a general trend, right? I think the uh, I think what we're sort of focusing on right now is right, whether we can delay or cancel uh, Pyra two and then also Patua Kali, um, and uh, while also I think addressing right, mitigating and addressing the grievances of issues uh, that have that uh, local communities have encountered and and local environment has been suffering, uh, and so I think what's interesting here is that um, you know I, there most most of these projects uh, do have Chinese sponsor uh, or, or a Chinese investor putting down equity right to develop these projects and so you know they are going to be uh, at a more uh, they're going to be more sensitive and more vulnerable right to various risks that those projects uh, will encounter or is encountering uh, you know as opposed to uh, projects such as um, Barapukuria and Agoda where uh, Chinese companies are just EPC or equipment providers. And so you have a lot, you're gonna have a lot less leverage, right? In changing the direction and overall fate of this project. Um, so, uh, and then you know, I think most of the sponsors here uh, I think this is the first co-power plant project that they have ever done or, or first project they're pursuing. And I think also the success and the reputation of it, right, would be really important for their more long-term success in the Bangladesh power market. So I do think the reputation uh, is here is important, especially for the sponsors. And so what, you know, the kind of press and the kind of public criticism that they will get, I think could also uh, be, be more important leverage uh, on those companies and compared to uh, levered on the uh, EPC companies and the banks, uh, which also don't really have presence in, you know, significant presence in the country. But these sponsors, right, they, they partner with local developers, they set up office, uh, and then they're, I 
investing, often most of them are not just looking at you know, investing in one co project, but really looking at uh, you know, broader market opportunities for investments in Bangladesh. So you don't want to, I think, lose your you know, broader market business over uh, the, the controversy of one project. So I think just in summary, those are potential areas of the influence that I, uh, and I think it just as an initial sort of assessment of where the opportunities are, I think uh, uh, understanding that the Chinese uh, co-sector, I think is very attracted to the in Bangladesh power market because of the, uh, you know, a very, a very nice conditions that are laid out in the power purchase agreements, the guarantees from the energy ministry to, uh, you know, Pay for uh, pay for the tariff if BPD uh, DB fails to pay the tariff, right? So these are all uh, you know bankable aspects uh, for for Chinese investors, and so you know I think these are also fundamental factors that I think civil society in Bangladesh needs to shift, right, to sort of tilt the balance of risk and uh, versus returns for these for Chinese investors. Um, uh, in the Green Peace China, as has also uh, last year written a number of articles pointing out that uh, as a result of the rush of building a lot of coal power plants, Bangladesh is also experiencing overcapacity risks. And so that should also be a warning for Chinese coal power investors. Um, and I, as we're seeing in Pakistan, right, as, as a result of, of a, a lot of overcapacity and a lot of piling on of circular debt, the Pakistani government is also requesting debt relief. And so that could be seen as a threat also to Chinese uh, risk factors for Chinese banks, right, to, to make new loan decisions. Uh, and, and again, I think across these projects, uh, there's always there's been a lot of environmental and social grievances. Uh, I do think we need to, uh, I think, increase how we communicate these issues to Chinese investors and, and financial institutions and looking at potential the opportunities to turn some of these issues into legal battles uh, to increase right the, the headaches and the risks for Chinese for the sponsors in particular um, and and also yeah I think for the same you know especially looking at the sponsors um, what are the some opportunities for them to engage invest in the grid improvement sector and in renewable energy I do think those are areas of solution that you could point out to them uh, in, in terms of how you know how they can redeem themselves and also uh, you know identify other alternative market investment opportunities in Bangladesh and so I think overall uh, a big question in the conversation for our company uh, discussion later is also like how do we also work with partners in China and international partners to tell those stories about the financial and reputational risks um, to the Chinese audience in a way that would encourage them to shift their business strategies in Bangladesh. Um, I'll call upon Tony to be ready. Tony, do you have slides to show us? Tony will be giving us a presentation on Europe's um, financial involvement in uh, the Bangladesh energy sector. So Tony Noshin is a researcher um, uh, with Orgewald. She's also worked on the global coal exit list, which is really being used um, so extensively across the world to, um, uh, to drop those companies that are um, still investing in coal. Uh, she has also been, uh, and still is, a part of the Save Sundarbans uh, campaign. She used to be with 350.org. Tony is speaking to us from Germany. Vidyadi introduced me, um, then uh, you also understand that um, exactly the finance research is not uh, my area of expertise. So I was feeling a bit of um, unsure when Mary Bhai requested me to uh, do this presentation because a European um, finance institution is not something that I was uh, working a lot with, but I will still at the end try to maybe take you to the area that I'm more comfortable with, uh, with the campaigns that we did in, uh, in Europe, still targeting some of the um, actors. So uh, for the overview, that it's kind of similar with uh, well, how eating was um, structuring that uh, the different roles like uh, in the Bangladesh's energy sector, we see the European companies and they play a different range of roles, starting from being sponsors, like solely uh, are the main uh, responsible company uh, undertaking the, uh, um, the project. And there are co-sponsor roles and then we also see financiers who are uh, giving money, like lending money, as uh, through um, uh, 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 through loans and underwriting. 
to uh, different projects. And then we also see different service provider roles, like in terms of engineering consultants and um, doing a feasibility study. Um, then we also see uh, them in logistical um, service, providing logistical services like fuel and transportation, and as operational and uh, management contractors for different projects. And then also providing machineries like engine and uh, gener generator supplying for different um, coal power plants, or even for gas turbine supplying for LNG um, projects. So um, here uh, I will just quickly, uh, so the overview will come at the end, but here we, I will focus on quickly three contested projects that we all know, the Pyra Hub, Fulbury Coal Mining Projects and Rampal, what European um, companies are involved in these uh, projects. So for Pyra Hub, recently Ugeval published this um, a five years last report where Pyra Hub was also of course one of the uh, projects where we looked into because this uh, uh, is contributing to a huge amount of uh, global carbon emission um, that's going to increase and it's, it definitely will lock us into uh, failing almost uh, towards the 3.5 degrees um, uh, increase of uh, global uh, temperature if these projects go ahead. So the Pyra have consists of um, these uh, different projects that we see in Borishal, uh, Potokali Ashuganj project, Potokali RPCL um, Norinko, Pyra Power Station and Pyra Seaport. So in terms of main uh, financiers, we wouldn't see European um, being like the sponsors, but when we look into uh, through different channels of like loans and underwriting, we see there are involvements. And this is the amount is also not small, like BNP Paribas is actually one of the top uh, four um, banks supporting um, these projects in uh, Pyra Hub. Then so I here I have only listed the top eight. So um, yeah, so we see HSBC who are headquartered in the uh, United Kingdom. There's Deutsche Bank, Commerce Bank, um, ING Group, Barclays, yeah. Um, and for the uh, investors who are supporting through uh, bonds and shareholding uh, these projects here, we see Government Pension Fund Global uh, from Norway being the top uh, from Europe and then uh, followed by Deutsche Bank, uh, Credit Agricole, Deka Group from Germany. Yeah, so these are the um, top players who are involved with, through the financing, uh, like the credits and um, yeah, financing in Pyre Hub. So um, now the next here, we quickly look at the Fulbury Coal Mining Project. This is one of the very well-known uh, uh, movement because it was very successfully, um, the, the project got canceled and stopped in, in 2000. Six, but um, as Anubhai was saying at the beginning as well, that uh, GCM Resources is still uh, trading their shares in um, uh, in London Stock Exchange. And here I would also talk a bit about later how Rumana Patrudi, uh, like the others in, in the NCBD um, UK, are still mobilizing abroad, and how the connection with global and local is still kind of raising the awareness and being able to stop. Um, the project. So here GCM Resources uh, is involved as the sole uh, sponsor, but they are also planning uh, at, the, at this point uh, to uh, build a um, coal fire power plant. So they are still uh, going to reinitiate the project uh, in uh, um, jointly with the uh, Chinese uh, investors. Um, for Fishnar here, uh, we know, we see then sort of, uh, the Fishnar has a different role and one could say in, in, in Yiting's uh, presentation was also like how, what kind of role uh, which actor is playing and it's uh, sometimes important to how we could pressurize them uh, to really stop the project or uh, what, what relative role they play. So Fishnar has, uh, is, uh, has been playing this role of engineering consultant. Um, for all these three projects, so uh, first we got to know about Fishnar through the Rampal um, power plant, uh, the, the Bangladesh India Friendship uh, Power Company that we have been protesting now for uh, last um, 10, nine years. And um, um, so through that, so and we see there are more further um, involvement as well in Matrabadi and Kohelia. So FOMO is a, a, a entrepreneurial development bank from Netherlands. They are also important because they're involved in uh, several different projects we see here. And quickly, just to share with you, so there are way more other different uh, yeah, to not to be overwhelmed, but it's possible to know and get the information of all these different um, uh, companies. And then comes the point of how do we engage and if we want to move an actor, how could we um, engage with them? So here, I'm um, just uh, sharing a bit of the a quick overview of the allies that exist in Europe and who could be potential partners or connections. 
So there are different activist groups uh, consisting of Bangladeshi expat groups and also European activist groups who has mm, mm, uh, potential allies. And there are also different NGO networks in the UK. Um, besides full reaction network, um, there's in Germany, uh, we have the OVAV looking into this financial uh, research. In the Netherlands, there's BankTrack, France, uh, Reclaim Finance, Italy, we come. And so there are potentially, it's possible to reach out and work. And these are just quickly, um, yeah, the AGMs that in the past that um, this happened uh, uh, um, uh, for the GCMs AGM. And in Germany, we did actions targeting Fischner. Uh, um, yeah, as my time is running out, I will stop here. And yeah, so what do we do next in the coming year? Thank you. Thank you, Tony. That was right in time, and we are racing ahead now into uh, um, India's um, energy investments in uh, Bangladesh. Um, uh, here uh, we'll be taken through uh, what India, how India is currently meddling in the energy scene in Bangladesh by Dr. Monon Gongoli, who is actually a medical doctor uh, with um, uh, three decades um, both in India and abroad in the fields of community health planning and evaluation. Uh, he has been instrumental in conducting a study on the health and environmental impacts on pollutions on populations, sorry, living close to coal mines and thermal power plants in Chhattisgarh in India. Uh, and uh, he's also conducted a similar study in Jharkhand. Jharkhand is also the place where um, he runs a TB clinic. Uh, he works closely with Adivasi communities in Jharkhand and therefore we call upon him because we know that um, Adani has set up Godda in Jharkhand uh, that will, um, uh, you know, take the power to Bangladesh. Uh, Dr. Manan, are you setting up your uh, screen sharing? I hope you are. Dr. Manan is um, coming to us from UK currently. Thank you uh, to him for doing this because always at the end, there are always technological mishap. Um, uh, I think I, I've been introduced, but uh, normally I call myself a small village doctor. Uh, and when I was contacted about this, uh, meeting and to pre present on energy investment in Bangladesh, I question myself, am I the right person? Uh, uh, because I am not, uh, do not understand much about invest investment or, or, and all this. Um, to be quick, uh, I think you'll we'll not be able to discuss much, but uh, I put myself an overview what uh, are the issues? And then I think that is the, what is investment and what is economic growth? And we, talk, we heard from Professor Anu and Pita about dirty companies, but it, it is dirtier when the state and, and companies go together, they always go, but when they go very crudely, then, then it is really dirty, really dirty. I will not go into those details, but I certainly touch what, how dirty it is in India. And then we talk about, uh, before, uh, uh, okay, so we move to this. Uh, so the dirty is that uh, the, when state and corporate sectors goes together, this one, uh, this is Narendra, when he came to Dhaka, I didn't call Modi because Modi become a brand name seems to me. Uh, when, when Mr. Modi came, soon after he, uh, a year later, uh, uh, and he made, he brought all other various co co corporate uh, heads, but main his buddies, uh, and made a deal. But this deal, I'll come to this, but I just wanted to say that the energy power generation uh, agreement was before, before uh, 
Modi came into power in, in 2010. But what happens after 2014, all changed. It was not anymore between NTCP and Bangladesh Development Corporation Board. And so the deal is that where Bangladesh will have to pay more to get electricity, there will be displacement uh, in Bangladesh, also in India. There are, we know how impact on the environment, but I will talk about the, the dirty part of the pollution. So next slide. This is, we, we, I think those who are uh, looking into, working into power generation and these dirty politics, we are familiar. This is in, in Gota, uh, uh, the, the right side, of course, the, uh, the coal will, will be coming from Australia and, and Indonesia. But I just do wanted to point out when this agreement was done in the earlier, that time it was not told that where the coal would be coming. And the Jharkhand government, what they were normally, normal condition and agreement, uh, and that's also been amended or violated that because the, the government, Jharkhand government will have to pay a lot more to have electricity from from, from Godda, but of course Godda uh, power will go straight to, to Bangladesh. And that's the, um, that's the, uh, the, the field uh, is actually uh, a paddy field where the various uh, heavy machineries went and destroyed, um, destroyed their uh, what they what's their investment that's the farmers investment is not money is is about just to have good food or at least <laughs> rice and salt um if we should then the same we we heard again it's a corporate club for for the uh, the rampal which is um, a number of companies are going to uh, do a coal-fired um, power plant, but question is whose benefit. But the thing is that uh, the the name is very good. It's called uh, Bangladesh India Friendship Power Company Limited. So that um, that's where uh, the Shundarban, which is I think. Uh, uh, maybe uh, 10 kilometers or so is the is the uh, protected uh, area for uh, animals for fauna and and the impact from that power plant on the on the what in water and on people around will be very devastating. So this is, uh, ah, then comes the Meghnabhat, but it, I think the, uh, the story goes on and on, not just Meghnabhat, then you go to Laldia, then the, where uh, Chittagong Fort, that will be, uh, that's where Adani also coming, uh, and then uh, already we heard about Fulberry, Fulbury and so forth. We also heard Professor Anu say that, uh, that they said now they are uh, reducing uh, the coal fire power plant again, plan, but is actually uh, to show the world that they are. But this one is, this picture is very uh, important uh, because uh, this power plant actually coming from, uh, from uh, Andhra because that's, that's already, uh, already uh, 
uh, of course, not usable there. So why not put it uh, put it in uh, Meghna Ghat near 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 Dhaka? And the water, uh, the present, I took that photo from it, from earlier presentation. It said that water is black. Um, and I looked at various other uh, images, personally I, where I went, is the same, it is, it is black. And then we go to, mm, next slide. The, it's the question is that the, the power generation, but whose well-being? The, the, the reason I took that uh, image, the sky is, is gray and the smoke is grayer. But normally in power companies brochure, you will see, um, you'll see sky is very nice blue and a very some, some um, some sky and, and clouds, nice looking uh, cloud. Uh, but actually that smoke is, is what it is, I will just touch upon. And then we talk about that, what, what solidarity, what, uh, uh, and what, uh, how we need to look at the impact on, on power plants. If we go to the next slide. Oh, sorry, it's a wrong slide. It already says, because I wanted to know what is investment. So uh, maybe maybe that is more, more of an, uh, uh, an appropriate, if you, I don't know whether you recognize this, what it is, but it's in fact, uh, as someone's um, uh, soul, which is hugely cracked, and and this is only a, a touching uh, what had the uh, impact uh, on on people uh, on people not only health their food their livelihood uh, and 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 often many places people are displaced so. If we go to the next slide, I will not, of course, go into those details, but the, the left one is, is an, some years ago, uh, it's a, um, it says that, you know, you know, the hidden threat of health uh, from coal. And the right one, is uh, is all yellow. Don't don't worry about so many uh, yellow. Uh, these are num a range of uh, a range of uh, pollutants, uh, and um, that is uh, that will be around Dhaka. Uh, that is Meghna Ghat. So don't don't think that the uh, liquid uh, natural gas is on not only expensive. It also produced the equally dangerous uh, pollutants, gaseous form. And we also heard about uh, before, a bit the mentioned about fly ash, that will be from the coal. And these range are, are on the whole body. So if we go left on, on this, and you see muscle and joints, and that something we found, not, not that first time we found, I think there was also in China, it already recorded, but not, is the young, small, young people came to our uh, makeshift clinic uh, with uh, joint pains, joint pain, not just to have a few tablets, but they really tried various places. And, and that's, uh, and you go on into, um, and a number of unexplained, uh, unexplained uh, impact on, on body. That's something important for whether you, we live in, in, in cities or whether uh, these people who will be displaced or will, will have to live close to the, uh, close to the power plant. Um, I'm not going into details, but it is so important 
to understand and to campaign, it is a lasting impact. Uh, even uh, with the mention about TB, uh, yes, I know a little bit of TB. So when I first went to the to the villages to and asked them, tell me three three important uh, health complaints you have. To my, I thought it would be bronchitis or because dust. So, so, uh, so it must be respiratory. But no, when I they said first first one was TB, second one was joint pain. And third one was their hair was uh, becoming brittle and uh, and falling. These are something unexplained, but no, not unexplained. It is explained. These are TB, not just from the bacteria. It is also pollutant. So uh, let's to move on quickly further. Dr. Monon, yes, yes, you're running out of time. Yes. So, so I will. will uh, your last yeah. slide. Last one, yeah. yes. So it's only uh, what I mainly wanted to say this, when these corporate and state, they go together and, and the, what is the impact? And we think that the economic growth will, will, uh, will be, they change the whole, whole population, but it's not. Even the Gujarat, where Modi was the uh, chief minister before, it's portrayed that the, uh, you know, huge, uh, growth, but you will, uh, if you go into there, you will see only 0.8 percent of of the estate being put on health, and thousands of migrant workers are working, and that's the impact. And that's thank you. No, maybe I go one more slide. That will do very well, I think. Thank you. Next one, next slide. So, so I wanted to say that. Uh, they are poisoning India. They will poison the whole world. Uh, so that we need to do. Yes, we need to have global solidarity. Next slide, please. Next slide. We need more. We need a lot more in various levels. So that's... Uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Monan. So um, Monan got us uh, both the direct impacts of uh, these kinds of dirty investments on the ground and on people's lives. And really some of the photos are what we've seen around um, coal-fired plants all over. And yes, um, in the end, the solidarity actions is where we need to move. Thank you. Um, and now for um, the IFIs, ADB, AIIB, the World Bank Group, Ryan Hassan, Executive Director, NGO Forum on ADB. Uh, thank you, Vidya. I'll just go straight into it and share my screen. Um, I think we're all a little bit pressed for time. So time, we want yes. To do this quickly. I think I put on way too many slides, so I'll probably skip a few more. Uh, looking at this, uh, I'm just going straight into it. Uh, so we're looking at the ADB here, and from a, just a macro point of view, ADB's energy policy has gone through a series of evolutions. So this figure which you're seeing is kind of like where a ADB started from. It had an ADB's policy initiative for the energy sector way earlier in the early 2000s. And now if we come to 2020, it, it has a strategy 2030 and it's reviewing its energy policy from 2009, which is somewhere in the middle, a horrible policy. Uh, it has provisions for coal, for gas, for coal related infrastructure and all the rest of it. The bank is notorious. It has been the largest lender of coal uh, in the world, uh, I think up to 2012. So. Where is ADB now? Uh, for us, uh, we're, as I said, it's looking at the 2009 energy policy and it has to review it just out of sheer peer pressure. Uh, it's independent evaluation department just came up with uh, an operational review, which is calling uh, out a recommendation for ADB to get out of coal finance altogether, which is a positive thing but leaves room for all forms of fossil fuel investments outside coal, worrisome. 
a uh, lot of money coming into the renewable energy and climate finance space, which you've seen, I think, with the Biden administration and uh, China's net zero 2060 pronouncement. Uh, so billions of dollars coming into climate finance. Uh, everybody wants to wants a piece of that pie. And then moving on to where is the bank heading towards, right? So we're looking at poor safeguard standard. We're looking at a lot of energy sector privatization and ADB's arm twisting of borrowing governments. Um, so according to the ADB from 2009 to 2019, the bank has approved $42.5 billion in the energy sector. Um, and Bangladesh, if you read at the bottom, is 9% of all of energy sector lending by the bank. Uh, what does that 9% translate on into? This is from the ADB website. If you go to the ADB Bangladesh country resident mission website, you will notice that energy sector is right up there as the largest investment area with 115 projects uh, at $5.82 billion. This is as of December 2018. Our recent data shows that a few more projects have been approved um, in the energy sector. Uh, now, this is what they intend to do in their own language. ADB assistance to Bangladesh has focused on power and gas generation, quite evident in gas transmission and distribution. And as it moves forward, we'll be on enhancing access to modern energy. Since 73, ADB has lent Bangladesh about $13 billion through 218 loans. Of this amount, 3.2 billion or 25% has gone to the energy sector. Uh, and they really don't talk about access to energy, it's quite a lip service because not even 1% of those billions of dollars has gone to rural electrification. All right, uh, next slide. So some examples of where the bank is lending, a 100 million um, uh, transport project for gas. And then Something outside the ordinary, because I just didn't want to list out a whole bunch of ADB projects, which we should be worried about. Uh, this is where we're looking at ADB's fingerprints in power sector reform. This is from an ADB report uh, for the power sector, ADB power sector development program of 2005. Um, this is what the bank intends to do. Government to cause the reorganization of Bangladesh Power Development Board, DESA, and BPDB's Northwest Zone Distribution Network and Siddhir Ganj Power Station into independent corporate bodies. So this is state uh, corporate, uh, basically forcing the state to privatize uh, its power sector under the Companies Act of 1994. Government to further ensure that the board of each such entity is constituted in accordance with the principles and procedures acceptable to ADB. Um, and once the loan was given to the bank, uh, to the government, uh, it substantially complied with. So what is the outcome? In 2004, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs approved the proposals for corporatization of Bangladesh Power Development Board in June, DESA in July, and BPDP's Northwest Zone Distribution Network in March. EGCB, which has been incorporated, so this is the private entity under the Companies Act 2004, is going to take over the assets of Siddhir Ganj Power Station as per the BPDB board resolution dated 12 September 2005. So BPDB's Northwest Zone Distribution Network has been corporatized. The Northwest Zone Power Distribution Company, Company Limited as certified on 2005. DESA has been corporatized, so on and so forth. I think you guys get a sense of which way the technical assistance loan goes in privatizing the power sector. Some more examples of the ADB energy sector project, additional financing of the Bangladesh power system enhancement and efficiency improvement projects. So we can look at more privatization, I guess. Uh, Dhaka and Western zone transmission and grid expansion, Southwest transmission grid expansion, um, the Rupshai 800 megawatt combined cycle gas power plant, which I think uh, groups in the Bangladesh working group have been looking at major safeguards issues. I just want you guys to look at ADB's uh, relationship with Summit and Summit Power has been notorious on LNG expansion. I think uh, some previous speakers have talked about the Mahesh Kali LNG terminal and Summit's, uh, Summit's imprint on that. So this is um, 
a proposed uh, equity project, proposed equity investment and administration of equity investments, Summit Power International Limited, cornerstone investment in a leading power developer. Simple terms, ADB wants to buy off Summit shares. And this is the language of the president himself at the time. I submit for your approval the following report and recommendation on a proposed equity investment of up to 60 million in Summit Power International Limited for the cornerstone investment in a leading power development in Bangladesh. The report also describes the proposed administration of an equity investment of up to 15 million to be provided by LEAP, uh, leading Asia's private infrastructure fund. And if the board approves the proposed equity investment by ADB, I I, as in the president, acting under the authority delegated to me by the board, approve the administration of the equity investment by LEAP. So not only is the bank reforming the power sector, not only is the bank actually investing in big scale fossil fuel uh, base load uh, power generation projects and transmission, but it's also putting money uh, into shareholdings. But the news is not all bad. This project did not get approved by the board. Uh, ADB as of now is not a shareholder of Summit, but it shows you the potential threat of what we're up against when we're looking at the ADB. Uh, so questions for ADB and civil society, uh, I guess in the group discussion that might work. Why, why does the ADB invest in gas and gas transmission in Bangladesh? What does it hope to achieve? And will power sector corporatization help Bangladesh achieve SDG 7? Uh, we know the capacity charge corruption with Summit. We know um, privatization in the gas sector has uh, destroyed sovereignty over gas resources in the country. Um, I'm sure uh, Anusar can give more details on that. Um, and why do we even need the bank? If we do, what should they be investing in a fossil free pathway towards recovery and Paris alignment. And uh, how do we feel about that advocacy track? So here's uh, Mehdi Bhai's best friend, the AIB president, Jin Lechun, uh, who made a very big pronouncement in 2017 that the AIB is not going to invest in coal. Uh, he's kept true to that to a certain extent. AIB has not invested in a coal power plant, but it has, um, it has eyes on Bangladesh. So these are the list of projects. You can just quickly glance through. A lot of transmission, grid expansion, power system upgrade and expansion, uh, Bhola IPP, notorious gas power plant. I'm sure we've talked about that in different seminars before. More natural gas infrastructure, more distribution and upgrade and expansion. Now, AIB in itself is a different beast than the ADB. Uh, ADB, if you look at the drivers of ADB's loans, you're in the macro financial world, the US is printing large amounts of money with quantitative easing and lowering interest rates. Same thing with Japan, large amounts of money printing by central banks, lowering of interest rates. So this oversupply of liquidity is depreciating both currencies, the Japanese currency as well as the US dollar. So in order to, um, in order to keep the currencies from depreciating, a lot of these debts need to be outsourced. And that is why the ADB is pushing these walls of money into the energy sector as loans. Now that, that you have to keep in mind because with AIB, you're looking at the same strand or the same method, but only by the Chinese, the Russians uh, and the Indians playing, pulling the strings behind the financing. The other thing within the AIB, which is different is as of January 1, 2019, the president approves up to $300 million worth of projects. Uh, energy sector, while there is uh, no coal yet, but AIB strategy allows coal, gas, and even nuclear power plants. And we are very much a donor darling for the AIB for various geopolitical reasons. The last thing which I want to bring about in my slides is Something new to think about in terms of where we might need to focus on, it is this newly approved digital sector strategy, uh, which coincides with China's 5G technology rollout. And this is from the digital sector analysis report from the AIB, you can get it um, on their website. So they're looking at four principal areas of investment, connectivity and transportation, storage and processing, 
services and applications, terminals and devices. So forget about reducing poverty or inequality. This is the new game. Huh? This is the new asset class of investment. Physical infrastructure and connectivity, look at the companies, China Tower, Eton Towers, uh, Indus Towers, so this is cell phone towers. Then comes the telecom industry playing a big role, Telenor Group for Bangladesh is important, Robi Axiata, so the private sector, Vodafone, Singtel. Storage and processing, so this is where computing, data service uh, or data processing centers, large amounts of power required, uh, all of this will require land, of course. Um, services and applications, this is the privatization part. The surefire consumerism, this is where the money is happening. Grab, Lazada, Amazon, uh, Facebook. And then terminals and devices, which is your scanners, um, uh, your temperature measurement, your um, RFID chips for paying tolls. It's a, it's a whole new level of uh, neoliberalism, I suppose. So the last questions are for us with AIB, what is going to power these systems? And when will the gas end? Uh, for Digital Bangladesh, um, which is our prime minister's pet baby, I think uh, she's, she's been talking about it forever. And her son is pretty much in chair with Digital Bangladesh and how to go about it. But we feel that this is a whole new different form of a development theory which adopts a Chinese hegemonic model. So you see this in the Digital Security Act uh, recently. Various activists have been arrested. People have gone missing under the Digital Security Act. A very, very uh, similar to the China social security system where citizens are kind of monitored at all times from buying groceries to uh, crossing the road. Total hegemony, total surveillance. So uh, we really need to worry about that. And also the bank is like an ivory tower sitting in Beijing approving projects and processes. So where is the transparency? And of course, if you look at that list of companies, you don't see any public uh, and social needs being met by these projects. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, not exactly a happy note, but I think our work is cut out for us. Thank you, everyone. Indeed, our work is really, really cut out for us. You've laid out the challenges, some of it we're just beginning to understand. Um, Munira, Munira from Market Forces will take us through um, uh, uh, J Japanese investments in Bangladesh. Munira Chaudhary is an analyst with Market Forces. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks and Yiting, that. you should indicate if you want to come back for a last minute. Munira, do you have a screen share? So today we're looking at Japan-backed projects, uh, energy projects in Bangladesh. I'm Munira, I'm an analyst for Market Forces. You're sounding a little distant, Munira, from the mic. Um, is it, yeah, is it that's better. better. Yes. I'm yes. an analyst for Market Forces, and the work that we do is shift finance away from dirty fossil fuels towards renewables and solutions for climate. So today we'll briefly touch upon Japan-backed energy projects in Bangladesh and then look at a case study which we're all, we've all been talking about, the Matabari coal projects. And then we'll quickly look at Japan's recent net zero emissions commitment and what that means for energy investments in Bangladesh. So when I was tracking the power projects that Japan is backing in Bangladesh, they have seven fossil fuel power projects and unfortunately zero renewable power projects. And I've made a list of all the projects here. There's a few gas projects, um, oil, oil fire projects, and then the ones that we will talk about today, the Matabari coal-fired power projects, two massive coal projects, which are 1200 megawatts each. And phase one is already under construction and phase two is being proposed right now. So Matabari is a coastal island in Bangladesh. It's in Cox's Bazar. And it's a highly climate vulnerable island because it's in the coastal zone in Bangladesh. And the project is being backed by a joint venture between Sumitomo Corporation, which is a massive um, trading house in Japan and a Bangladeshi government owned utility company. 
And for the first phase of the project, JICA, which is a Japan government-backed um, overseas um, uh, development agency, they provided the loan for the first phase. And it's a massive, massive-sized loan. It's US dollars, 1.48 billion, which is actually one of Japan's biggest overseas loans provided in, in Japan's history to any other countries. So you can see the scale or, and the level at which Japan is pushing these coal projects in Bangladesh. So now we'll quickly look at all the major issues around the Matabari project. Already the community in Matabari are suffering because of the construction work of this project. Lots of families have been displaced from their homes Lots of fishermen and traditional salt farmers have lost their jobs because the project site is in the places where they used to work. And communities still now, after five years since the work has started on this project, are saying that they have not been properly compensated. In addition to that, the construction work has caused waterlogging in Matabari area. And after a heavy rainfall um, incident, there, the, the whole area has been waterlogged. People are really suffering and children have drowned and died because of that. Um, and in addition to that, the construction, because of unsafe working standards, uh, there's been injury and death of workers as well on site. And we all know that coal is one of the dirtiest forms of fuels to generate energy. And these Matabari projects, phase one and phase two, if they're built, they are projected to result in the early death of 6,700 people. And in addition to that, there will be um, uh, diseases that are linked to air pollution and the pollution caused from the coal project. And in addition to that, the greenhouse gas emissions from these projects will make climate impacts worse, especially if they're built in a place where the area is already in the coastal zone, it's highly vulnerable. Um, it, will, it will only make things worse in terms of climate impacts for the people of Bangladesh and, and the whole world. So that really brings into question Japan's recent commitment to the net zero goal that they have announced. Um, the Japanese government have recently said that they will um, have a net zero emissions goal by 2050. And it brings into question the sort of energy projects that they're pushing in Bangladesh versus the, their new commitment that they've recently made. Energy experts and scientists have told us that what, if we want to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees, no new carbon um, emitting infrastructure can be built. So we are yet to see what Japan does about their new um, uh, commitment that they've made towards climate and what they do about energy investments in Bangladesh. There's a huge opportunity for Japan to really shift towards uh, renewables projects like solar and wind um, and you know, shift away from these dirty fossil fuel projects that they're uh, trying to build in Bangladesh. Um, the good news is that most of these projects are still proposed except for Matabari phase one, which is under construction. So there's a huge opportunity. I'm really looking forward to speaking to you all about um, in the breakout group about um, the things that can be done with civil society's efforts. Um, and if there's any questions or any details you'd like, please um, send in the chat box and I'll respond. Thank you so much. Thank you, Munira. Thank you. And now there are lots of questions for us all to grapple with. Uh, we've seen the trends, we've seen the impacts, we know where this is heading. Uh, the climate crisis uh, for Bangladesh was always very... Shall we just ask anyone who wants to share to uh, begin or what do you think? Shall we ask the Chinese um, group to first start with their sharing? My because God, what an honor. <laughs> German precision and uh, Chinese dedication, I'm sure, will mean that you guys are all set. Vitya, this is a very old prejudice. <laughs> German precision. Okay, we can start. Um, it's, it's very quickly because 
I mean, there have been 20 for, uh, 21 people assigned for this group and we only have been six, I think. Mm -hmm. And we tried to fill out this template, which was sent to us. Um, I don't know if Tuhin wants to display that now. Um, perhaps, yeah, it would be good because yeah. then everybody can, can if see. It, uh, allow me to share my screen, then I can share it. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so we really have been running out of time um, because we just tried to describe what rough plans are there uh, in the room already, but it's not very fixed yet and not very, it's, it's yeah. So we, we had um, from clean, I mean, <laughs> Everybody in uh, Bangladesh Working Group and Clean knows what's going on. Um, so, <clears throat> um, um, Kunta was reporting on on what is planned on Power China, the, the activities for January. Um, there will be a report published in January, and. Um, um, mainly targeting the Matabari phase two. And it will be also covering some issues on displacement and uh, com missed compensation. Um, we haven't had the chance to discuss any synergies between our groups, but we can start from here. And secondly, there was uh, this uh, big ICBC campaign, which will start Next year, coordinated by 350.org uh, with groups like Ogobald, Green Camabel, um, APMDD, and I'm sure there are a lot of other groups uh, also in this uh, involved in this campaign. Um, as far as we checked or, or Jaojun checked very quickly, there have been four big projects uh, also financed by ICBC in Bangladesh. Um, then there is, um, I'm not sure what's this one, although there's Urgobald inside, it's also ACBC or it's Bank of China, it's probably Bank of China, I'm, I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah. So this is also, but it's, uh, it's connected with the ICBC campaign. Um, and then Urgewald is mainly focusing on AIB investments in Bangladesh um, and creating an AIB watch for the next year. And then we have Boston University with this wonderful data set they did on Chinese policy banks, which uh, will be, this will be a big help, I think, for everybody working on Chinese investments in Bangladesh and globally. That's all from our group. Please add if I forgot anything. Thank Very quickly you. add. Um, so the Bank of China was also China Development Bank, uh, CDB. Oh yeah, China Development, China Development Bank. Bank. And also we were talking about also um, bringing in impacts on rivers, um, giving oh, the sorry. focus on rivers now and other environmental. Uh, so get, getting those studies in and focusing on that in terms of uh, the power plants and their impact. So thanks. There's um, also one point I think which is important because the current uh, targets internationally, ICBC, Bank of China, CDB, even CHECSIM, uh, or perhaps are not enough if we want to focus on Bangladeshi coal projects in the pipeline and also those who have been constructed. There are possibly other players there that may not be in the major radar screen of international groups, but are important for the Bangladesh financing. So we should have a further uh, research and check into those involved in the Bangladeshi projects from the Chinese players. Great, thank you. Thank you, Nora, Rohini and Liddy. We're sure the Chinese investments, um, uh, you know, uh, countering is in very safe hands with all three of you powering away. Thank you. Um, and now we'll move to uh, Europe. Uh, Henrique Butigen, climate campaigner, Bank Track. Uh, 
Yes. And I think um, Masood and Mehdi were also in that group. But yes, Henrique, over yeah. to you. Thank you. Um, I think I can do without the presentation and be very brief. Um, we also found the you know the time limit was was tough. Um, I th also because I think we still have a lot to dive into and to learn about um, investments and finance in Bangladesh. Um, but we did get to talk a little bit about the plans of the people in our groups and uh, possible you know, opportunities that people can join in. So one thing that uh, Kees Kodde uh, from Oxfam, the Netherlands actually mentioned is that it would be good to dive into the, the specific ways in which European bank and for him, especially uh, Dutch and Belgian and German banks uh, are financially involved in a lot of the Bangladeshi projects. Um, I mean, the information is there, but it would be good to you know, gather a group um, maybe one time and really discuss these different ways that they are involved and then follow up um, with specific actions that we can take for these banks. So that was one, one idea we had. Um, then Richard Solly from the London Miner Network uh, mentioned that they will again do something for the GCM um, AGM, probably together with the Pulbari Solidarity uh, network um, and the AGM will be in February uh, 2021 and he mentioned they will probably try to do an offline action but of course there will also be online action around it and it would be really great if people can join on uh, join in and on that action and really shaming GCM and you know trying to prevent them from moving ahead with, with the projects so that's that's a great opportunity I think then Tony mentioned that um, they will probably relaunch the Fichtner uh, campaign in the beginning of 2021. Uh, and they are still looking into all of the possibilities around that and people to involve. So uh, if people want to, you know, keep thinking along with these this, uh, actions, it's probably best to reach out to Tony. Um, and then I also mentioned we really try next year to do a lot more around the European banks AGMs and part of that is usually to also bring attention to a lot of the foreign projects that they finance. So I think we can definitely bring in more attention around uh, Bangladesh projects that the, the banks uh, finance in one way or another. It could also be infrastructure around these projects or something like that. Um, and as a closing uh, comment, we really, um, uh, Richard asked us how we could share all of these ideas, you know, if we have updates on all of the activities that I just mentioned. Uh, so I would like to ask um, the organizers or Mehedi um, if it would be possible for people who want to, uh, to share contact information for the participants that have been on this call today. So we can all share the actions that we are planning for the next year. And maybe also to uh, send invitations to people to join the uh, Bangladesh Working Group uh, on External uh, Debt mailing list. So we can keep sharing all of these, uh, these ideas. Um, and maybe also gathering smaller groups in next year, you know, for people that specifically want to focus on European banks or the, the Benelux, Benelux banks or anything like that. So that's uh, yeah, it's a nice start, sense. but we have a lot to uh, follow up on. <laughs> oh, yes. I think each of the groups had the same kind of trajectory where we all thought we were short of time and there was so much more to do. And just as Henrique mentioned, I think a lot of us thought that those in our smaller groups have to get back together to plan actions more concretely and explore a little more further as to what is possible to do together. Meanwhile, also all of us who have come together and really want to push um, these um, agendas in our constituencies forward, I think what we should do is meet beginning Jan, all of us who are interested in, in this call, uh, and maybe uh, that will help us um, actually go right into action in the new year. What do you say? Shall we all try and meet before maybe 10th Jan? Maybe we can set up a, what do you call it? A doodle um, thing to, to, to decide when to meet. Nora, I can see you sitting like that. Can I put you in charge of that? 
of reconvening us. Let's say debrief of this international um, meeting uh, of solidarity with Bangladesh. And um, so we debrief and we also plan ahead, right? Nora, just say yes. I'm not going to let you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm uh, until 10th of January. I'm out of office, so I don't know. Ah. So only the doodle uh, poll will work, and maybe we'll meet yeah. before 15th January. Okay. Um, so uh, thanks, Henrique. We'll also. Uh, keep that into account that we'll have everyone's email in and so that we can also um, uh, you know um, uh, get in touch clean bangladesh texts us that okay we'll organize after the 10th so nora you are in um now shall i call upon uh, petra petra uh, on ifis she's campaign manager of course with recourse and jen was supporting that group petra and jen would you Yes, thank you. So I'm hoping Jen can help me share. My computer just refuses to cooperate with, with Zoom. So Jen we, is always willing to share screen, but never her face on screen. <laughs> no, no, I know. And I'd love to see Jen smile, but never mind. We'll have to do that some other day. Uh, thank you, Jen. It's up. So we were discussing IFIs. We spent 30 minutes whizzing through three big um, elephants in the room, so to speak. Um, so the one we started with was the ADB. So if we can go to the next slide, I think, Jen. Yay. So, so what we tried to do in the limited time was just to come up with what are the key things that's happening in the next 12 months. Um, I haven't taken a huge amount of notes on each and then um, map a little bit who's doing what. But as uh, Vidya said, there'd be opportunities to communicate more and also to point out on all these IFIs that um, I'll run through, there are specific networks that are working, there are specific email groups. So if anyone is not on those groups, they should um, get in touch. I think with Ryan in particular, he knows them all. Um, so there's a specific group on ADB, and uh, there's even one now coming up on fossil fuels and ADB it related to the first point on the energy policy review. And there's a group on AIIB and uh, on the World Bank, there's a, there's a big group where lots of different things comes through. And that's actually a number of different subgroups um, and so on and so forth. Um, so just to bear that in mind. Um, so on the ADB, I mean, Ryan did a great presentation earlier on ADB and AIB. So the Energy Policy Review um, is coming up uh, this year. Um, and um, this is, that's an overarching one. So that obviously presents lots of opportunities to influence. Um, I'm not sure if you put this right. So National Dialogues, I might have referred to the country party strategy renewal. Um, but either way, that, that's one a big um, policy review. So NGO Forum is, is our natural um, point for that. And it's actually ongoing already. And so there's lots of opportunities to engage. Um, and then there is the country partnership strategy renewal. So that will definitely have to be national dialogues on that. And that's lots of um, overlaps or, or things of interest um, for those working on energy specifically, in particular the climate change pillar. Um, and I think we've allocated uh, the Bangladeshi Working Group to lead on this. Uh, we, we assume that that's what they're doing. I don't think, I'm not sure if you had anyone in the room. Um, then, of course, the annual meeting, which should have been in Georgia, but now seems to most likely go virtual on the 1st of May. So that's obviously an opportunity to bring anything um, related to campaigning on the ADB um, onto their agenda and, and uh, think creatively on how to make an impact. We also listed a couple of uh, projects that are specifically important in terms of the ADB's portfolio. So the Rupsha gas power plant um, that I think CLEAN is, is working on. Um, Summit Power, a uh, big player that actually links in with most of the IFIs. They have got lots of IFI backing, um, which mainly goes to gas and also to oil to some degree and no renewables. Um, so I probably should have listed CLEAN there again and also us as recourse, we've done work on Summit in relation to AIB. Um, and I know, um, I think Urugaval and others have been supporting on that as well. Um, 
And then the COVID-19 loans, which also spans across all the different institutions. Um, there's been evidence of them going into to fossil fuels or uh, support fossil fuels. Um, so that's that's another thing we're keeping an eye on. Um, and NGO Forum has been doing lots of research on that. Apologies, cat jumping up. Um, right, let's move on to the next one, which is the AIB. Jen. Excellent. So um, energy sector strategy review potentially coming up there as well. Uh, we don't know exactly. It may not happen in the next 12 months, but we should certainly be making some noise in the next um, 12 months. Um, so I think the action there should really be um, us to put pressure on the shareholders and, and management to, to get the confirmation and then uh, start making noises about a coal out and also gas. Uh, we need to make a lot of noises about gas. Um, so I've listed a number of organizations and your forum in particular, then Old Wild Recourse, and we have lots of other allies and partners in our networks. Um, the Environmental and Social Frameworks Review is officially closed for consultation, but there's still a lot of work being done behind the scenes. So Urgewald has been uh, working closely with the German um, constituency um, or the European constituency in particular to organize another workshop. Um, we've already had two workshops with the European shareholders on this, so there will be another one. So we have more opportunities to input there. Um, and climate change and energy is one of the blind spots in the ESF. We were quite appalled with the language. So, so that's one thing ongoing. Um, it could potentially, I think the approval is coming up in April, but nothing is certain. It seems to be delays. Um, Bola IPP, Clean's been doing an amazing work raising this project onto the agenda and uh, with AIB. Um, so I'm sure they'll be continue monitoring and, and doing advocacy on this one with support from um, us in the network. So NGO Forum and Ogabald Recourse and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the kind of headlines on the AIB. Uh, and then moving on to the World Bank. So the World Bank, like the ADB, also has its uh, country strategy being uh, revisited this year. So the official one is actually finishing now this month, um, though it probably will roll over into the next year. And energy is the biggest sector that the World Bank invests in in Bangladesh. So it's a, it's a prime opportunity to try and shift the big elephant that the World Bank is, including then the IFC and, and MEGA and um, and so on. So all the different arms of the World Bank. Um, at the moment, we don't know what the process is. Um, they're not responding to emails on this. We know that they're evaluating the current uh, program in Bangladesh. Um, so there's, there's lots of different issues to bear in mind here. Uh, it's about what is the process? Is the process appropriate? Have they already started the process and not told anyone? Uh, should we bring in shareholders to, to start making noises and so on and so forth? Uh, and then making sure civil society is ready. Um, and I mentioned earlier that uh, Recourse has done a, um, a guide to how you can engage in these processes to be impactful. Um, so I'm happy to share that and then really hoping that we can work with groups in Bangladesh to, to make some noise and make sure that energy is at the top of their priorities, but for the right reasons, not for the wrong reasons. Um, DPL funding is another thing that both Urgeval and Recourse are working on um, and I think we're both wanting to look closer at Bangladesh there as well. Um, so that's policy lending which gives uh, in many cases incentives to fossil fuels, that's something we've seen in many countries. Um, and then again, COVID loans. I don't think anyone's looked at Bangladesh specifically but as I mentioned earlier that there are potential that that also incentivize fossil fuels rather than renewables. Um, to add to this list, I just wanted to mention as well the um, COP26 and the climate agenda and opportunities that that might uh, bring in terms of raising issues regarding energy and climate change um, onto all of the IFI's agendas. And they have come together in something called the, the 
Paris Alignment Working Group, um, the MDB Policy Paris Alignment Working Group, which has been running for a couple of years but hasn't really made much progress, but they are supposed to be um, announcing um, where they're at and, and some hope some more clear targets and commitments, uh, certainly by COP26 in Glasgow in November or December next year. Um, so that's something we can call their cards on. Um, if they're not changing their internal policies, they can't claim um, to be a full contributor to this working group. So, so that's another thing that uh, kind of spans across. And we didn't really have time to go into more things that spans across all of these. Um, finally, I think the last slide is just who we were in the group. Um, so this is us. We were nine because I forgot to add Jen. And I'm really sorry, Jen, because Jen was also in our group. Um, so I think that's it. It's a bit of a whistle-stop tour. And I'd be happy for anyone in my group to add anything that I've forgotten or anything, any enlightenment that's come since we discussed. Um, and just thanks to the organizers as well for today. I think it's it's great and really look forward to the conversation in January when we're all back refreshed as well. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, Petra. Uh, oh, here I am. Yes, thanks, thanks, Petra. There's a lot there. And yes, those of you who want to engage with the energy policy review of the ADB, there's a new list served, just like Petra said, fossil free ADB that um, you can join. So you can just text us if you want to be added to that new list serve, which will go live today, maybe. Um, so uh, next, let's hear it from India. So the Indian uh, bit, uh, the Indian focused discussion will be given to us by Rajni Santosh. Rajni is part of uh, setting up Extinction Rebellion here and works with many youth groups. Um, and yes, Rajni. Vidya, would you be able to share that uh, uh, screen? Yeah, I'll try to share screen, yes. Uh, hello everybody and um, I will welcome our group to correct me in the end because I've got this very rushed up job because I'm not working on my system. Uh, so if I'm if anything needs to be corrected, let's do it uh, after this call or during the call. Uh, so we tried our best not to be chatty and with their cutter short. Uh, so um, what I have here is uh, a summary of the discussion and uh, the proposed actions that we said we would take up. Um, our group had, I'm very sorry, Vidya, you'll have to help me with the names. We had Manan, Salma, Rajni, Vidya, Malau. I think I got her name wrong and Mohammed. And I don't remember the last one because I lost uh, my electricity in the end of our session. So we had one more person. I Forgive me, I don't have the name here um i'll be putting it in so what we said we will do is broadly um we had three uh, major stakeholders that we want to target the adani ambani and the ntpc because of their role in rampal which is a state-owned um state-owned uh, player and of course independently right to the government i mean the government of india um, so Adani, we said we have to write to the government of India from outside because uh, currently we face this uh, threat of defamation suits in India because activists have been calling out Adani on various things, including the farm crisis. So writing to government of India to put international pressure um, was a good idea. Malau said she would be part of it. Um, going to the AGM in physical, a few of us from India can do that, which is 2021 August, uh, probably targeting that. Uh, prior to that, of course, there'll be, um, uh, we also said there'll be social media campaigns uh, prior to the AGM. Most important, what Manan's uh, presentation and uh, his discussion in our India group was on having a baseline health impact assessment to be done prior to the operations at Goda and also post the operations, which will give us a good, uh, which will give even the government a good analysis on how 
the plant has been doing. So we have to push for that. Again, Growth Watch and APMDD have uh, agreed to be the organizers of this. Um, I think that's about it in Adani. Ambani, we, uh, I think we had ideas on how currently Reliance's uh, owner, Anil Ambani, faces bankruptcy trials in London. And uh, hence, there should be uh, pressure, right? People should write to the Indian government and their own government, Bangladesh government, to ask for feasibility in going with Reliance at Megagat. If, if I'm wrong, please feel free to interrupt me with your others. NTPC, again, being state-owned, we have to um, put pressure on why the government is, uh, you know, um, going ahead, not only uh, subsidizing these companies, but also, um, I think we're also subsidizing, uh, what was that? Subsidizing as well as uh, writing off loans, right? We've been doing that as a government, the government of India has been doing that consistently for these three uh, players. So continue to subsidy put- Subsidy for things. fossil fuel industry is, uh, is more than for RE, we had said, and we should explore that further and come up with a plan on that. Yeah. And uh, finally, yeah. Um, in general, I think we discussed a lot on the health studies assessment and keep doing continuous assessment and collaborate after this webinar. One more thing I've missed out is what Manans and others also said is to uh, create these um, anti-Adani country-specific collaborations, which, I mean, country-specific groups which already exist, collaborate with them. Uh, not just anti-Adani, but also the anti-coal uh, lobbies, uh, citizen lobbies, which are there, activist lobbies, uh, we will all try and reach out and do that, right? Um, Vidya, is that... I'm going to be uh, doing this with Extinction Rebellion. I think we're aware that they're doing this in Germany and UK a lot. So um, that's why I've put that... Um... Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, Rajni. Okay, I'm sorry. It's very noisy out here. Yeah, so um, what we we will need to collaborate more with the anti-Adani groups across the countries, share with their own actions and learnings. And uh, I also take uh, responsibility for trying to get more information because XR has been quite active in Europe, at least on this, share with their learnings. So I invite anyone else with your or others? If uh, I, I guess in the interest of time, we'll go on. There are actually anti-Adani groups that are already together from our previous conversations also. We call ourselves Friends Against Adani. So uh, you guys can all, uh, of course, um, join that. So, um, so the baseline health data we hope to put together soon. Uh, in 2021, and I think that will be the best thing to counter from the ground. Um, I'll now move on to uh, the last group to report back, after which we'll hear our climate campaigners um, from Japan. Wakako Kobayashi, program staff of JAXIS. I think Shagor was also helping you uh, in that group, Wakako. Wakako, would you repeat? No, not just uh, Wakako is going to present. Okay. Our... Right. I will be present. Thank you, Vidya, for the introduction. Um, I will share my screen right now so that everybody can see the slides. Um, okay, so for our, I'll try to be really quick just because time is pressing right now. Um, had some great feedback from other groups groups and breakout sessions. Um, our group had eight participants in total, including myself, and we had some great discussions about how to target uh, Japanese institutions and companies. So here is our table, and they're kind of uh, divided into three groups. So first we have Japanese corporations, and then we talked about uh, targeting Japanese government agencies, such as JICA. And then we talked about um, 
tactics that we could um, do towards the Japanese government and Bangladesh government. So for corporations, we mostly talked about increasing shareholder pressure from the public and also civil society organizations. Um, and this is specifically towards Sumitomo Corporation, IHI Corporation, and Toshiba, uh, which are three Japanese big companies that are involved in the Matabari Phase Two project. So um, increasing pressure through actions on the ground or doing social media advertisements. And there was also an idea of doing um, email blasts. So the timing for these shareholder pressure actions would be in June, which is when the AGM takes place. Um, one thing to mention here is that in our table, they are listed individually like the actions, but um, there was a great point brought up by Anton that we should make this a joint campaign so that there's greater organizing and just um, streamlining uh, towards these uh, different companies. And so next we have the Japanese government agencies. Uh, we mostly talked about JICA. We had a heated, uh, great discussion on how to target them. So the first one was uh, raising concerns to the JICA office, office, which is located in Bangladesh. And we said that these could be through um, calling them directly um, or just through um, contacting them through emails, um, as well as having actions on the ground in front of the office. Um, a timing for this we uh, brought up was February, which is when the first public consultation meeting for Matabari phase two will take place. So JICA workers will be there in Matabari meeting with um, local stakeholders and residents. And we thought that this was a great time where um, NGOs could go and um, participate in that consultation. Um, next, we have having direct dialogues with JICA. So this is actually something that JAXES, the organization which I am a part of, is doing right now with JICA. We um, are raising our concerns and questions about phase one issues and problems with the scoping plan of phase two. So we will continue doing that. Um, and lastly, we have JICA issued bonds are held by Tokyo Marine, which is a big um, insurance company in Japan. So not just focusing on JICA, but also putting greater pressure on Tokyo Marine. Um, and then next we have the Japanese government, specifically the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, Japanese embassies located in Bangladesh. So regarding the embassies, we can raise concerns to them through, again, calling them or emailing them um, or launching some social media advertisements um, to the government. There was a concern that doing actions in front of the embassy may not be a good idea just for safety concerns. Um, and also Bangladeshi expats in Japan should raise awareness of the Matabari issues um, to you know, the Bangladesh government or Bangladesh embassy in Tokyo. And so for the Bangladesh government, we had um, the first one was, well, there are great experts and you know, professionals who are working on environmental um, issues in Bangladesh. So really raising issues by these environmental lawyers associations um, through media outreach or through online. And then we had, we talked about involving the youth in our um, actions. So raising awareness through among students. And this could be done through knowledge sharing seminars or helping organizing the youth movements that take place in Bangladesh. And lastly, we talked about um, building greater capacity amongst NGOs because um, one point was brought up about, you know, civil society organizations doing great work and very important work, but sometimes they don't really leave strong impacts. So we should work on um, greater capacity building. And for timings for these, we listed the COP26, which will be happening in November. Um, we thought that was a good timing to uh, target uh, governments. And I know I rushed through that a bit, but if there's anyone from my breakout session who would like to add anything, um, yes, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Anyone from the Japanese group? That seemed like all laid out and perfect. Um, 
I think you've brought that out beautifully, Wakako. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. And now we go into um, uh, hearing from uh, senior climate campaigners and um, those who have uh, been there on the ground fighting the good fight and also bringing it to the international level. Uh, we have four people, one from Bangladesh and uh, this is also the time that we go back um, uh, to the public forums of Facebook and Twitter. Shall we, Mehdi? I'm going. We will. Okay. We will first hear from Liddy Nakpil, someone who's familiar to most of us here in the room. Uh, she is, of course, um, uh, head of the Asian People's Movement on Debt and Development, APMDD, and she also um, co-convenes the Demand Climate Justice um, International Campaign. Uh, Liddy, uh, if Mehdi is ready, then we would love to hear from you. You're always an inspiration and someone who can egg us on into more action. So what are your responses to what you've heard in terms of action for 2021 and, um, and some insights on what would work? Okay, thank you very much, Vidya. I, I think we've had a long full discussion over so many important things for supporting the work, uh, all the international and outside of Bangladesh organizations and networks, how we could support the work to affect the energy transition in Bangladesh, not only from coal, but from, for all fossil fuels and making the transition to clean and renewable energy systems for people and for communities, not for corporations. Um, I'm not going to speak very long. I, I think it's, there, it's important to re reiterate uh, some points that uh, many of which I think have also been expressed. So first, I think it's very obvious from like the full series of workshops and dialogues that have been held and especially today that there is indeed a need to step up, scale up, escalate the international campaigning support for the energy transition in Bangladesh. I think uh, we have seen in other wins and victories and also in progress in Bangladesh, how it is very key that struggles and campaigns to affect national energy transformations will really uh, progress and win victories if there's full support from the international community because this is not just their fight, it's our fight, it's for the planet, it's for everyone. Um, for this uh, support, I think there are two major areas that international groups and groups outside Bangladesh can play. First, it's supporting local fights against coal projects, and there are many indeed in Bangladesh, and supporting the national campaigns that are not just about stopping coal projects, but also affecting policy changes on the part of the government for the whole uh, energy uh, sector in Bangladesh and all related sectors and to make sure that we support not just stopping the fossil fuels, but the just transition component of these fights and the component that has to do with transforming economic systems as well. We don't want a clean energy system that is fueling an unjust <laughs> economic system. So we fight the economic fight alongside with the energy fight. The other is challenging and stopping the international financing and investment of many players across the world. We've heard today, Japan, uh, China, India, public financial institutions. I'm sure there's still that we haven't actually identified if we dig deep we will be able to identify some other international players that have a hand. Uh, I would say not just in financing, but in the whole value chain of setting up uh, coal power and fossil fuel power in the country. Um, as we do that, I think the second point I'd like to reiterate how very, very fundamentally crucial and as a matter of principle, we need to strengthen our coordination with Bangladeshi movements and groups and follow their lead. 
and advice in terms of what we do as international and non-Bangladeshi actors and players. Um, you know, I worked very long in the debt campaign and it, at the international level, and we used to have a slogan for groups in the South because there was a lot of debt campaigning in the North. And the slogan was, nothing about us without us. So as we plan for supporting the energy transition, just transition in Bangladesh, we need to make sure we're working very closely with and following the lead and following the advice of our partners inside the country so that we don't plan anything just on our own and then just spring it on them as sometimes that has happened in the past, not just in Bangladesh, but other countries in the South. We really need to make sure that we're working and partnering very, very closely. I'm sorry for my phone. <laughs> um, and then the third point, last point I'd like to uh, say is that I think it's very important in our next steps uh, that we have meetings for concrete plans. Uh, there's a very good brainstorming and sharing of existing plans that took place in the breakout groups, but we really need to have, I guess, more focused and collaborative, really concrete planning for the challenges in 2021. And I would really welcome that this uh, process will include a very careful mapping of the different initiatives of movements and groups in Bangladesh so that we can have uh, a much, uh, we meaning the international and non-Bangladeshi groups will have a very uh, clearer picture of the landscape and how we can help support, strengthen the work inside. Thank you very much. Thank you, Liddy. Thank you also for that commitment to help strengthen the work that needs to happen for this energy transition in Bangladesh. The government has been making the right noises, but there's a long way to go and we need everyone's solidarity. And of course, that important point that we must map all our allies on the ground in Bangladesh and internationally, and also that uh, the Bangladeshi groups must lead first and take those decisions. And um, you know, then we can support it from outside with what we need to do. Thank you, Liddy. And now uh, I call upon our other comrade, Mohammad Reza Sahib, the Executive Director of People's Coalition for the Right to Water, Kruha, Indonesia. Thank you, uh, Fidya. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, the, uh, the most inspiring word of the years for me, for us here. Uh, well, uh, uh, to make it short, because the, the time is quite pressing in this, uh, you know, uh, uh, extensive uh, uh, discussion, uh, I will make a very short. Uh, well, uh, uh, we are seeing that uh, there's a clear pace out uh, in the countries of, uh, in the north, also some in the south, like in the Philippines, there's a very good uh, political uh, dynamic that we can learn from. But especially to this initiative, uh, I will, I think uh, what uh, from the beginning, uh, I'm thinking that what can we do uh, to be engaged, uh, to be involved in this very good initiative uh, from Bangladeshi, also you, Pipia, you, you uh, I think you contribute very significant role uh, to, for this, uh, you know, where Bangladesh uh, being a center uh, of, of, of the works, of collaborative uh, work. I think we need to institutionalize that, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, like a formation of the, the international uh, network on Bangladesh development, especially on energy, uh, you know, transition also, quote unquote, uh, clean uh, energy transition. Uh, uh, for me, I think uh, what uh, we can do, I will connect this with the groups in Indonesia, because Indonesia also uh, playing parts on this uh, destruction of uh, Bangladesh with this uh, false uh, uh, energy crisis, uh, we don't know. Uh, what uh, crisis they mean, so we need uh, to to have our own definition what crisis because uh, this is mostly like I said um, in many occasions that uh, the crisis is uh, uh, came uh, from overconsumption, not uh, 
this is not related to the people needs of energy uh, especially uh, we can see it very clear in our part of the world and our take will be another uh, uh, to from that uh, connect to connect with the uh, existing uh, coalition here we have a uh, bersihkan indonesia or clean indonesia uh, also uh, uh, national coalition for uh, energy sovereignty here uh, that mostly have the same focus you know to direct the, the company the private actors that involved in this but especially for kruha we are working uh, on the uh, what uh, on the question what about the peoples uh, that uh, that in this uh, big uh, picture and what about the the biosphere of uh, you know the living space of the uh, that uh, of this uh, also a story so we we are uh, on the process of building a framework of advocacy uh, on uh, based on human right uh, especially on legally binding instrument uh, uh, and on that uh, issues uh, we need to focus on house and home countries obligation so uh, i heard uh, that most of the plan focus on the on the financier of supporting uh, institution also the the uh, the private companies that that is in this uh, uh, dirty economy dirty energy uh, but what about the victims of the, we are seeing this and on the in the framework of human rights violation where is the people what do, what the people are saying on this we need to bring them uh, in the in this uh, picture in our work we need to to have you know uh, to provide for them a space uh, so we can hear from them what they say also uh, you know the the green capitalism may be the maybe uh, the the near future but what about the the, the victim of uh, human rights violation so we need to also to address this uh, question to the uh, countries to the state authorities uh, hope uh, both home or and also host countries uh, in this regard indonesia uh, bangladesh also the where the investors of uh, this dirty energy came from uh, the other framework is also aside from the host and home uh, countries obligation also the right of the victim also how to connect this i think uh, the this is also mentioned uh, by one of the lawyers uh, from bangladesh on the how to use unesco framework uh, to build position on uh, world heritage uh, that we are talking about uh, sundarban etc so this is related to world heritage also biosphere research how to protect this how to protect the living space how to protect the people in this uh, big uh, picture of, uh, of stories i think uh, we are on that uh, process and uh, we will send that uh, uh, i think we, we we can host that in the after the 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 activity that already decided in the year of uh, next years after that we, we will follow up uh, we will be a good follower of this great initiative we we have learned a lot. Uh, thank you very much, and it's honor to be to be connect with you. And we have, uh, I think, uh, we have obligation because we have also Bangladesh and Indonesia have a very historical, a strong historical connection. You know, Indonesia as a country, uh, the first country I think in the Islamic world that uh, recognizes Bangladesh independence. Also, we are in also in the same block of non-alignment movement that is still exists in the within UN. Uh, process of negotiation. I think that is also another way to approach uh, the China uh, government, also uh, the other government, Indonesia and Bangladesh. You know, maybe uh, it takes it will take different approach from the 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 mainstream uh, advocacy. So, uh, so the the work to uh, to expose the 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 dirty works around this is important. It's the most important, but that. Uh, there's also another important things also to how uh, to direct the government from uh, from within also from outside the country itself thank you thank you Th thank you reza and uh, i think um, what reza said is very important that we need to redefine things from our own perspectives um uh, thank you also for the solidarity that indonesia continues to feel with 
Bangladesh. And um, I think um, reactivating some dying institutions of collaboration uh, is also important, like NAM, etc. Thank you. Thank you, Reza. And uh, we are with you in the good fight and also on centering human rights. So it's not just about what, who the financiers are, who the EPC contractors are, but what those finance, uh, financing is doing to people and to communities on the ground. Thank you uh, for that. And now I'll go to someone who actually works with communities on the ground to counter um, and uh, to build their own narrative. Um, uh, Tom Virachat, um, he's someone who's wonderful with people. Um, he's with the International Accountability Project. Um, I'd request Tom to also wrap up what he heard from the five uh, breakout sessions and uh, give your own uh, unique um, sense of what we heard. Tom Virachat. Thank you so much, Pidia. Um, hi, everyone. I think this is an amazing um, space and, and achieved what dialogue supposed to be, right? We have seen how to build um, solidarity from local level, national, regional, and international levels. This is, I think, the true meanings of solidarity is taking the same risk that we all are, are in this together in the climate crisis. And from what I have heard, and people have shared the rich knowledge uh, among the group, right? I, I have heard a lot of um, strategies being discussed, right? Like we, we have to know where the information gaps are. We have to understand um, who our targets are, right? I heard more than 20 targets that being thrown around in the different countries, different levels, and um, some strategies that we have to know who are these people? What are their motivations, right? And what are their roles um, in engaging in this um, energy sector in climate crisis in, in Bangladesh? And I'll be aware of different um, power complex, the relationship between states to government, corporate power, even corporate captures that have brought some, some risk to um, the defenders and find what are opportunities, what are leverage points, and, and how to hit those, right? Like um, I have heard people share um, information about, oh, these actors are reviewing this policy, they're producing these reports, and what are our um, inroads into getting that? And um, it's very clear that um, these groups are trying to, you know, knock the door one by one and, and how to amplify these collective voices. And I think um, we, we have heard a very clear um, short-term, intermediate and long-term goal, right? Like we have heard um, the groups trying to stop one project, trying to get one thing from another. We also see intermediate um, goal in terms of changing the policy, changing the directions of, of how these institutions and actors are play, like divestment into their, their um, practice, and also long-term, as um, Lydia and other mentioned, the just transition to the renewable that benefit the people, not just the corporations. And I think these are amazing dialogue, amazing work, and we should surely continue to dialogue more and share resources, knowledge, experience, and solidarity. So thank you so much for this space. Thank you, Tom. You're always someone who peps up our spirit and makes us feel like we want to work together. And thank you for bringing that positivity and that energy uh, as usual. Thanks, Tom. And um, yes, we have discussed um, where, what, where our inroads are, what our leverage points are, and uh, we hope that we can forge ahead with that into 2021. Um, I now call upon um, our last, in a sense, um, speaker. Um, she will, of course, thank this international group for coming together for Bangladesh and its energy transition. Um, but also she is someone who has worked tirelessly to ensure that that happens on the ground for communities, for cities um, in Bangladesh. 
uh, its many uh, communities around coal fired plants and other places that depend on her. She is the star lawyer in the Bangladesh Supreme Court. She's also chief executive of the Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association, Bela. Uh, Sayeda, um, are you there, uh, Sayeda uh, Rizwana Hassan? Yeah, Appa is here. Yeah, yeah, Appa yeah. is there. And we hear um, Mehdi's voice. Mehdi, you must also, I think, say something after Appa has her bit because we've all come together inspired by your passion uh, to change things on the ground in Bangladesh. Um, but first, Appa will be. Appa the, will close formally. Right? Appa will close formally. Then. Formally for all of us. And then those of us who want to stay back and um, have some Adda, Mehdi will host that. But Appa, on to you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, see, I Mehdi tells me to do one thing and you tell me to do another thing and Mehdi never tells me to do what I you, actually do. <laughs> you, you just do what I ask you no. to do. Don't no. listen to him. <laughs> uh, to be very honest with that, when Mehdi told me to be here, I thought I'll be here just the first one or two presentation and they'll go off. But I actually could not leave the computer except for 10 minutes when I had to go to say my prayers. Because all the discussions that uh, we all had were so detailed, were so much, uh, you know, elaborate, and it actually shows the hard work and the continuous engagement people have with the agenda. So I have personally learned a lot. It's, it has it gave me a global scenario. It also told me about the national level challenges from different lenses. I mean, we know our struggles, but it's always good to see it through someone else's lens because that adds, adds to your own perspective. So thank you to all the speakers, everyone who participated and everyone who is actually thinking about a cause that apparently is a cause of Bangladesh, a cause for Bangladesh, but that actually is not the case. I mean, it's not a struggle that we are only doing here in Bangladesh. It's something that you are doing in India, something that someone else is doing in Indonesia, in Philippines, even in US. So it's there everywhere. The, the countries that are investing here, if you, talk, if you talk about Germany, we know how clean they are going in their own energy sector. If it's England, Russia, I mean, all groups like us, even in Russia, people have their uh, movement against the nuclear power plants. But I mean, it's the same thing that we that we share. No, the same degree of concern, the same vision we have the we have for the world. So thank you all very much from a Bangladeshi who is really concerned to see what's happening in my country. The situation is particularly bad because of the governance scenario that we have here, because of lack of democracy that we have here. But I was I mean, listening to all the presentations. I was just wondering whether it is a global phenomenon that we are trying to address or it's purely a national thing that we are trying to address. I think it's a global thing. Even if one bank withdraws, there will be another bank for it. So, I mean, it is a global thing. It's not, it's energy sovereignty of the world that we are talking about and energy sovereignty of our country that we are talking about. Uh, I don't think Bangladesh is doing it like this because Bangladesh is thinking in its own way. I think the global scenario has a strong impact on what's on how Bangladesh is behaving. So it's very good to see that we have got friends from so many different parts of the world. I think one a uh, crisis that uh, is giving us more strength in our fight is the climate crisis. I think for climate change, even the developed world are uh, under pressure to switch to cleaner energy. And that has given us the opportunity to come together and to really justify our agenda with more uh, reasoning. Uh, I think the call for today is to mobilize. The call for today is to resist. And the call is for transformation. It has to be a global transformation. So I would say it's mobilization, it's resistance, and it's transformation. Yes, we have resisted the Asia Energy Project, 
but that is that is it yes the court in one instance in bangladesh or in few instances in india have said no to coal projects but that's it it hasn't really changed the policy of the government so while it's important to target specific projects to add to the uh, bigger scenario it's important that we also at the same time attack the global reality the global thinking process and i think climate change has given us this all that opportunity uh, the the policy that we have in bangladesh or anywhere in the world perhaps is top down it's corporate oriented and it's foreign funded what we want is a bottom up uh, development planning what we want is community led and community endorsed energy policies and definitely policy that would that would empower that would build capacity in our national actors so that what we get is cheap what we get is safe and what we what we get is accessible energy now we are having all this foreign investment whoever is signing the agreement is making profit but the rest of it is coming on us at de as debt so it's not only energy that's coming it's huge amount of debt that's also coming it's environmental destruction it's you know uh, eviction that's uh, coming along with all these packages we call for bottom up uh, energy policies energy projects we call for community led and endorsed projects and we call for uh, more capacity in the national agencies so that we don't have to really rely on the foreign ones and i was really amazed to see that adb at one stage wanted to have shares in one of the companies that's that is something that has come uh, new to me. I wasn't aware of this. So I would say that while we talk about the policies of all these bank and financial institutions, we better work on our national policies also. Our national policy is still keeping that 10% target, whereas our prime minister says 100%. So I think it is not only accountability of all, only the finance, financiers, it's also accountability of the national governments. So we put pressure on the national governments, we put pressure on the finances, but there has to be a change in the entire um, global perspective. And when we talk about energy sovereignty, I'm sure we have our own definition of that. It's time that we sell it uh, in a much more articulated and in a much more coherent manner. Uh, before I conclude with the call for mobilization, trans, uh, resistance and transformation, just one note for Mehdi. And maybe uh, before we have another international meeting after the 10th of January, is it possible that you arrange something nationally at the national level so that we know exactly which role which organization takes and uh, what should be the national voice, uh, the common national voice that we will be communicating to a global audience. So I, with these words, I thank all my um, friends from different parts of the world. One more point. I think maybe we can actually work on a particular case that we can take to the uh, court without attacking any coal project or a nuclear project. We just go to the court and ask the court to direct the government to go for a higher uh, ambition for renewables. This is some, because it's a positive agenda. It's apparently, and it actually is, a very benign agenda. And we won't be arguing against Rupur nuclear. The court won't accept it because the political pressure is too much on the court. But as I said, a country that can't manage its municipal waste will not be able to manage nuclear waste, not, to, not even to think about uh, Bangladesh managing its nuclear waste. So we can think about going to the court with this very positive agenda of directing the government of Bangladesh for increasing its renewable target. And I think maybe if we have a national, if you have a meeting of the national groups a day long or a half day long, that will help us strategize better at the national level. We'll have a common language to uh, pick up and then we'll be able to better communicate. So thank you all and uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rizwana Appa. Uh, really, and I think that point about transformation through a kind of positive resistive action is a good one to carry forward uh, immediately and definitely uh, clean Bela and other groups can convene a, a national dialogue um, by the 10th 
and um, after that we can come back to the international solidarities expressed today uh, but i think that wrapping up that uh, saida rizwana hassan did uh, no one can do it better so um, uh, thank you apa and um, now we call upon everyone to really turn on their cameras because jen wants so to I take a collective photograph and we can go off facebook perhaps um and we can yeah continue yes thank you so rizwana um you wished us for christmas but there's work to do in bangladesh so through christmas and into the new year um you'll have to help convene that national meeting um we're going to push you as i have been pushing you on something else that you need to do ami shunte parchi na muted ache i'm just sending okay everyone when you're ready okay jen 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 your video your video please fast okay one but back yeah. first batch one two three. okay another okay One, two, three. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being so wonderful. I know it's been a super long meeting, but you've stayed because of your commitment to system change uh, and um, to seeing that um, Bangladesh is on a better energy path. Thank you all. um all the co-organizers especially even our cats and pets who've been around in attendance thank you so much and please have a very very merry christmas whether it's warm whether it's white or colored um and whether it's cold or whatever but enjoy your christmas but i, I, I from my you. side i should pay thanks to all the background workers like masud bhai uh, poppy tuhin um, uh, sagar jain and and uh, i forgot maybe one uh, yeah so, amant kurbina oh sorry <laughs> oh my god huh? talk about me taking for granted <laughs> thank you thank you nora nora told me that she will not be able to uh, participate for the whole, uh, full length whole time but she is there she is here she still now so together thank with uh, rizwana apa even nora couldn't step away thank you so much who knows this here you know Knud is here. Yeah. Who, who, and Knud, yes, officially you are the very best friend Mehdi has ever had. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nobody's going to take that from Mehdi. you. Mehdi. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.